So anyways, here we go. Jake 22 competition. The rest of these I'm shooting Thunderbolt. Let's see if my dot came up. Hey guys, what's up? This is me coming from GNA today, so I'm comparing the SIG P322 to the Taurus TX22 competition. So the way I like to do my comparison videos is I like to give a list of where the P322 is better, give a list of where the TX22 competition and the TX22 is better, and then I'll just kind of give a list of, of things that they basically have in common. All right, so for the P322, the things that I think is better about it over the, the TX22 competition. Number one is the magazines. So these magazines are 20 round magazines. And actually what I figured out is I can definitely put 21 in here and I think a few times I squeezed 22. So um, they say 20, but I, I definitely can get 21 in there. So these hold 21 rounds really, where the TX-22 holds 16 and 16 is all you're gonna get in there. Now I know you can buy base plates to add to that, to add, you know, to get more rounds in that, but the same thing's gonna happen with this. So I just like to compare, you know, stock to stock on this. It's 16 to 21, really. And then they're also gonna have 25 round extended mags. Okay, another thing that I think is really cool about the P322 is this flat trigger. Um, I, just, I just really prefer that. Of course, it's just a trigger shoe and it can be removed and you can put this rounded trigger shoe right on it. And if you prefer rounded, you have that option. Okay, the P322 is slightly more ambidextrous. So the safety is on both sides. And we're clear. So you got a safety on both sides and the slide stop is on both sides. So it's here and it's also here. So very cool on that. Um, the magazine release is only from one side, but you can swap it to whatever side you want. So depending on how you shoot, you can swap that and make it truly ambidextrous, you know, fit exactly what you need. And we're clear. The TX-22 has an ambidextrous safety, so that's good. But the slide stop is only on the left side, you know, for left-handed or for right-handed shooters. And the mag release is reversible to the other side. Okay, another thing I like about the P322 is that the mag release sticks out a little bit further and it's stiff enough you're not accidentally going to release the magazine and it's kind of in a spot where you're not, you know, not going to hit that very easily. So I do like that that kind of sticks out more. On the TX22 regular and the competition, this mag release is kind of molded right above where this trigger guard starts to go down and so it doesn't really protrude at all. It's very functional but I just like a little bit more sticking out just a little bit further. Okay, so the P322 comes with these fiber optic sights and I prefer the fiber optic over just the standard white dot. I can, I can pick those up a lot better. One thing though that, that I need to say about this is that this rear sight base, I'm not a big fan of the way you have to adjust the windage on this. There's this little screw right here basically and there's a nut up underneath it. If you take this whole sight base off, you can see and it's easy to do. Um, but to loosen that off, with the included Allen wrench on, on my first range trip, I rounded the inside of that stupid screw off in there. It's trying to be as careful as possible and it got to where it's basically rounded off and I can't do nothing. I'm gonna have to get a tool or something to dig in to, to loosen that off. So not, not a fan of that, but the, the green fiber optic is very good. Okay, another thing that I, I personally like, and a lot of this is personal preference, but I do like the grip texture of the of the grip here on the p322 a little bit better although i've always really liked the tx22 i do like this a little bit better it's a little bit grippier it's not too aggressive it's really to me the perfect amount of grippiness and it's on the front strap and it's on the back strap here so so very very good on that okay on the tx22 both of them have very good triggers but i i would have to give a slight edge to the tx22 trigger it's just, it's just so good. The brake is so clean and the reset is so short and clean. I just, it's just really on triggers like this. The TX-22 is my favorite trigger. On the P322, it's an, it's an awesome trigger too. But it's got a little bit further reset, but it has a very clean brake. So, 
they they both have very good triggers but i'd give a slight edge to the tx22 but the p322 is no slouch on that okay another benefit for the tx22 competition is how the red dot mounts to this firearm so it's, it's in a weird place, definitely not a traditional thing, but the red dot actually mounts kind of to the frame of it. It does not mount to the slide where the red dot does mount to the slide on the P322. And the, you know, there's several things to be said about that. Number one, the red dot is not taking the punishment of, you know, reciprocating back on the slide, which there's still plenty of force acting on it. I understand that, but it's not near as much as being on the slide. The other thing that, that's even, even more important to that is um, the, sl the red dot being on the slide is not going to affect the, si the slide cycling. So on the TX-22 competition, there's many, many options of red dots that you can put on here. It does not matter how heavy the red dot is because the red dot is sitting on the frame. It's not sitting on the slide, so it's not going to affect any cycling. Um, and in the TX-22 competition, they have ways where you can adapt to the four major uh, red dot footprints and so you have way more red dot options with the tx22 competition okay on the tx22 competition you get three magazines whereas on the p322 you only get two and those mags are a lot cheaper you can get these mags for about 20 bucks where the sig 320 mag or 322 mags are about 30 dollars right now so these are you know quite a bit cheaper but again what the most important thing on all that to me is that this holds 21 and that this holds 16 I can buy more mags, holding more rounds in one mag, that is the ticket. That's the most important thing. So just a quick thing here, the, the TX-22 competition definitely has a better box. The SIG P322 has this kind of small little box here, um, and it's just a standard egg crate foam. I mean, it's good. It's a good, you know, nice hard case, has really nice uh, lock up there. But on the TX-22 competition, it actually has a fitted foam case in here, which obviously that, that's just a way better situation there. I definitely, definitely like that better. Okay, I definitely prefer the takedown on the TX-22. And the reason for it is, is that when you take this thing down and on the competition and on the regular TX-22, um, in just the regular takedown, the recoil spring and guide rod pull completely free. The barrel pulls completely free from it. And you know, there's nothing crazy going on. That's just what you do every time you take it down. And I like that because it's easier to inspect the barrel. It's better to clean the barrel. It's easier just to get to stuff and get stuff done whenever it all just comes apart like this. The P322 has very good takedown also, um, but the, uh, the barrel is actually truly fixed. I mean, the, the TX22 is a fixed, whenever it's operating, but when you take it down, it, it comes loose. Here on the P322, to get this barrel off, you're gonna have to knock this punch off and do some stuff to be able to get that barrel off of there. And you're not gonna do that in the standard takedown process. I mean, it's still perfectly accessible and all of that, but I, uh, I just prefer the takedown of, of everything coming apart like this on the TX22. Okay, the TX22 competition with the red dot, so it's gonna be heavier, is one pound, eight ounces. With the unloaded mag, the P322 with an unloaded mag is one pound, 1.4 ounces. Okay, we're clear on both of these. We're gonna test the, pull the trigger real quick for its weight. All right, so on the TX22 competition, three pounds, 13 ounces. Pull it one more time real quick. Three pounds, 15.6 ounces. So right under four pounds on the TX22 competition. Three pounds, seven ounces, so about three and a half pounds. One more time. Three pounds, seven ounces, so very simple, so uh, very consistent on those two pulls. So about three and a half pounds to right up to four pounds. So so very similar, maybe just a hair lighter on the P322. Okay, for price, so um, these are gonna end up being about the same price. Um, the the P322 Sig is saying it should be about 399 bucks. That's where the, the TX22 competition is at. Um, I do not have any inside connections at all. I, I do not. Um, I just know how to watch for stuff and I, I got my P322 for the 399, $15 shipping, so I did good on that. 
And eventually that's where the price is going to be. And whenever the price, whenever enough of these become available and everything kind of levels out, um, these will end up being right about the same price. These two guns are for steel challenge. These are for running around shooting at steel, maybe shooting for critters. These are not intended to be like, you know, sit down at a bench and, and shoot like that. These are not target pistols and they're definitely not target rifles. And so for me on that, on these type of, you know, handguns like this, as long as they're not keyholing and not some crazy wild accuracy problems, as long as they're generally doing what they're supposed to, that's what I would expect out of, out of these, which that may be the most obvious statement anybody's ever made, but um, they're, you know, and they're both good. And um, with that being said, I did put these on paper and I will show that to you um, kind of as I was videoing that, some of my, my camera batteries died in the middle of all that. So I'm gonna kind of have a couple things splashed together. But anyways, I'll end up walking up to the target and I'll show you. And also with that, I shot, um, shot some uh, CP, the CP33 on that same target as well. And I'll talk about that in that range video of that. Go down here, we're, that's 10 yards there, so really it's probably about 11 or 12 yards. So there's a group, I don't know if this is showing up, I can't see nothing. There's a group from the TX-22 competition, TX-22 competition. Here's the CP-33, and here's another CP-33. Here's one group from the, um, the SIG P-322. This was Federal Suppressor. And then here's another group. There's one there, but there's, I think there's, well, I don't know. Anyways, that is one group from the P322. So TX22, TX22 competition, CP33, CP33, and P322. So I would say very similar group sizes there. Here's some other groups from the P322. Um, I can't remember what this is. Now, you know what? This was the same stuff. This was that Aguila standard velocity. So all these are the same rounds. This was the suppressor. Um, so anyways, very similar group sizes on the P322 to the TX22 and CP33. Okay, the P322 may look like it's a striker because you can't see the hammer, but it is not striker fired. It is actually hammer fired. It just has an internal hammer right here. Okay, just like on the MP22 Compact, it looks like it's striker fired, but once you take this thing down, you can see very similar in the way the barrel is attached to the frame like that, but there is the hammer also. Okay, on the TX22, the TX22 is a true striker fired handgun. There is no hammer in here. Here is the striker right here. Okay, both of these guns are dry fire safe. On the TX22, I've never seen it in any literature, but the developer of this gun, James Pittman, I believe is his name, whenever these were first introduced at SHOT Show two or three years ago, I can't remember how long, um, there was an interview where he said that the TX-22 is perfectly dry fire safe. He said that, and I've seen that in real world. I've test, I've dry fired you know, my, regular, my regular TX-22 and this TX-22 competition hundreds of times. And... Um, I know in general that's wearing parts out. I understand that, but it's not like it's dinging the breech face or anything. So um, it, it is dry fire safe. And of course, that's what SIG says about the P322. That's what they've been saying in all of this is that it's dry fire safe. So both of them are dry fire safe and good to be able to practice doing different drills with that. All right. And so the question comes up, all right, which one would you pick if you could only have one? Well, I'm going to give a diplomatic answer and then I'll give my, my final answer. Truly, truly, but, and the TX-22 has definitely proved itself to me over thousands of rounds. So it's, it has earned its reputation to me personally, and it's earned its reputation, you know, just in the whole industry. The, the P322 is still the new kid on the block, if you want to say it that way. 
Um, I truly believe it's, it's going to come out and, and it's just going to be a well-received handgun and it's going to be good. There's no doubt. Um, it's, it's been very good. They're, they're, they're both very good. And really, they, they both kind of fill the same niche, really. Um, and somebody you know, may say to me, well, you really should have just compared the regular TX-22 to this one. But this one has the cut for the red dot where you can put the red dot on there. So I felt like it matched better to, to, this, uh, to the TX-22 competition. Um, but they both kind of fill the same niche. I, I really would be, I would be great with shooting either one of these and still, still play the, or still challenge that I shoot from time to time. But okay, to get down to, to it, um, I think after the new wears off the P322, and I'm not saying that it's going to just go away, it's going to be a big player in the market. But I think after the new wears away, for me personally, the TX22 is probably still going to be just a slight edge above the P3, the P322. But if somebody took my TX22 competition, I had to use this, I would be totally, totally good. And this would work, would work perfectly. Okay. For reliability. So talking about what's happening as you're shooting, um, I shot, shot about 600 rounds or so through the P322. And in that I've had two, um, you know, things where I believe the gun had something to do with it. And I, and really probably it has to do with the magazine in that case. Uh, one time the round started to go in the chamber and it just got stuck and this was Winchester white box and those the actual projectile spins very freely in the case on those and actually sometimes the the bullet actually wiggles a lot so that may have been the cause of that is just that bullet just wobbling so much it just as it was going in it just kind of wobbled like this and got stuck on the chamber um, I was shooting so that was one failure the second failure I had um, is where the round started going to the chamber and for whatever reason it just got pushed up and it was like hanging sticking up out of the top just coming out of the ejection port right here and that's probably a magazine thing just putting too much force or something but that's all that's only two malfunctions in the in 600 rounds and those were the first 600 rounds so i think that it's just i think it's going to get better and better and i've shot lots of i've shot lots of handguns especially 22 handguns and yeah, I can just tell when things are going to give problems. And this thing just ran so, so cleanly for me. One test to me of whether a semi-auto, a 22 LR semi-auto is good is if it can run federal auto match, which is a weird thing because auto match, you know, it says on the box, it's, box it's intended to be used for semi-autos. But for me, traditionally, it has always been the worst thing for semi-autos. And I don't know why. I know I hear people talking about auto match a long time ago was a lot better, but any auto match I've used in the last few years, it just chokes my semi autos. It seems like it happens all the time. The P322 just chewed it up and spit that auto match out. It did awesome with the auto match. Not one failure in 100, 125 rounds of auto match. So that right there speaks, speaks good things to me. The TX-22, I've literally shot between my two TX-22s, I've shot over 10,000 rounds, I know, and just absolutely, absolutely reliable. Of course, every once in a while, there's something that happens in the gun that causes a stoppage, and you're, I mean, in a 22 handgun like this, you're not gonna have 100% reliability. It's just not going to happen. Um, but I've, I've had some handguns that have very bad reliability and these two are not that these two are this one, especially for sure. The TX 22 is going is, is awesome on that. And I really think that's where this is going to get. And again, it doesn't, it, it's important for me to shoot mine, but mine is still a sample size of one. Even if I shot a hundred thousand rounds through this one gun, that really doesn't say much about overall about a P322 because mine may just have gotten everything exactly right about it. And somebody else may get one that has burrs all in there and causes jams and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, the more, the more P322 reports you see, the, the more validity there is to it. Okay. Now, as far as durability is concerned, and when I talk about durability, I'm talking about like, you know, over the years, how are these things going to hold up? And really, I, I think they're going to be in the same ballpark because really they're made from the same components. They have aluminum slides, they have polymer frames, 
when I first was looking at the P322, they were talking about like a stainless steel frame. And I was like, oh man, that's awesome. I, I thought they were meaning it was, I, you know, I didn't know what they meant. But it's just talking about the subframe that's in there. So really, mainly this is a, a polymer gun here. Um, and just very, very similar uh, materials that they're made out of. So I, I don't really see either one having an edge over the other. The P322 comes with a you know threaded barrel on all models, so that's awesome. The TX22 uh, competition for sure is made for that. I mean, it's already half by 28, where on the P322 you have to use this adapter to be able to get to that half by 28. And I apologize, I have no idea what my dogs are barking about in there, but I think they're trying to go to sleep. They're telling me to shut up and go to bed, but, and I'm about to. Directly at the reset, you're right at the wall, so it's a little bit pulled back to break. 